Shooting on film can be incredibly expensive, from actually buying the film itself to getting it processed, then printed. So today, hopefully I'll be able to save you just a little bit of money by showing you guys my four step process on how you can simulate my favorite film stock, Kodak Portra in Lightroom. And I'm gonna start right now. Now, if you've ever shot on film, I'm sure you'll notice that the type of film that you're shooting on, the film stock, plays a really big role of how your photos will end up looking. Now, my favorite by far is Kodak Portrait, which is designed for using on portrait style photos. And it creates this beautiful look you can see on screen. Here are some of my 35 mil photos. But we can actually create this look, or at least get close inside Lightroom. And that is what I'm gonna be showing you today in my four step process. So step one is going to be global adjustments. Step two, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to color grade. Step three, I'm gonna be showing you how I did all my masking and local adjustments. And then lastly, I'm gonna be showing you effects. So post cropping in yet, and most importantly, adding in the right amount of grain. Okay, so let's move on to step one, which is global adjustments. So this is the photo that we're using in this example. So what I wanna do, head over to the develop panel. Then all I wanna do is drop down to the basics panel. Now, these particular photos that I shot, I actually shot in manual white balance and I actually use a gray card. So I know I've got the right white balance for the scene. Now, if you're running a little bit too blue or a little bit too yellow, then I definitely recommend changing that. But if you're happy with the white balance, let's move over to exposure. Now, because I want to save this as a preset, I'm actually going to leave the main exposure alone and I will adjust that afterwards. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is drop down to the highlights here. Now, I'm really gonna reduce the highlights down. I'm gonna drop that down to about minus 50 in this example. Then with the shadows, I'm gonna drop that down, but only by about a small amount around right about minus 10 also in this example. Now, with the whites and blacks, what I wanna do is really reduce the amount of dynamic range found within my photo, creating a bit more of a film look. And it kind of matches what Kodak Portra offers you in camera. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is go to my whites here, I'm gonna drop that down by around about minus 50 in this example. And then with the blacks here, I'm also gonna increase those by a small amount, around about plus 10. Do what this is, will do, is it will remove a lot of those whites and also remove some of those blacks there. Again, simply reducing the amount of dynamic range found within the image. And we can actually see that if you have a look at your histogram. Next we've got is our texture, clarity, and dehaze. In texture, I like increasing that by a small amount, just by 5% usually works. Then in clarity, and this is usually a global thing when it ever comes to portrait photos, I do like reducing clarity. It really does soften out those skin tones. And it also works when creating a Kodak portrait look. So in clarity here, I'm gonna drop that down by minus 20 and dehaze, I'm also going to do the same there. I'm also going to drop that down by minus 20 as well. Now, that's a little bit too strong for this example. So what I might do is I might just go to minus 10 instead. So five, minus 20 and minus 10. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave vibrance and saturation alone. Now we really do need to reduce the amount of dynamic range in this image to kind of match Kodak Portrait. So to do this, what we're gonna do is drop out of the basics panel and we're gonna go over to tone curve. Now in tone curve, we've got our point curve, which is our main exposure. Then we've got our three channel curves. So we've got our red channel, green channel, and our blue channel. So firstly, we're gonna to go to our point curve here. And what we're gonna do is gonna to go to the white section and reduce that down by quite a lot, I would say. Something around so works quite nicely. And then also go to the blacks here and increase those up by the same amount. Now, obviously this now image looks washed out. We need to add in a little bit of contrast. So what we're gonna do is go to the highlights and we're gonna raise those up just above our main curve line, which is our 45 degree line you can see here. And it's the same situation with our shadows. We're gonna drop those down also like so, creating this kind of S curve that you can see. But what we're gonna do is add in a little bit more contrast in the far blacks. So we'll go for something like so, and then also the same situation with our white. So bring that up, adding in a little bit more contrast, basically removing the whites and adding in contrast to the highlights, and then removing the blacks and adding in a little bit more contrast to the blacks there. And if you're finding the photo a little bit too dark or a little bit too bright, you can just simply raise or increase the mid-tone brightness there as well. But I usually don't affecting it too much. So input of 128, and I might go for output to simply of 130 in this example. If you'd like to learn more about the tone curve and what it can do to your photos, make sure to go ahead and watch this video here, which is my masterclass tutorial all about the tonal curves adjustment layer. 
Okay, so now let's move over to our channels. All we're gonna be doing is creating a color contrast effect, and this is really easy to make. What we're gonna do is simply go to our highlights here, bring the highlights up in the reds, and ever so slightly bring the shadows down in the reds. So we go for this ever very, very subtle S curve. Then what we're gonna do is right click, go to copy channel settings, go to our green channel here, right click, paste channel settings, and it's the same situation with blue. Click on the blue channel, right click, paste channel settings. And that's pretty much all we're going to do. Now I am finding the overall composition of this image not perfect, and that's something we definitely can fix with cropping. So what I'm gonna do is go to my crop tool here. What I'm gonna do is go to my angle. Now I'm gonna use the bathtub as our kind of straightened line here. You can see it's ever so slightly off, ever so slightly skewed, but not by much. So what I'm gonna do is just use my straighten tool just to straighten the uh, overall photo. And I'm finding there's a lot of information that I don't really want in this photo on the left-hand side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring that in ever so slightly, use the rule of thirds here and simply bring that further in. And now I'm gonna go ahead and click enter. And I'm a lot more happy with the composition. Actually, I might bring it out ever so slightly and go for something like so. So now the image is straightened and I'm a lot happier with the composition and I'm keeping the aspect ratio landscape three by two. Okay, so that's all we're gonna be doing in step one. Let's move over to step two, which is most importantly, color grading. Okay, so the very first color grading tool we're gonna to be using is the color mixer tool. And this is broken up into three sections. You've got your hue, saturation, and luminance. And hue, if you didn't know, is the type of color. So blue is a hue, red is a hue. Saturation is the intensity of that color. So how much blue is in blue, how vivid, how intense it is. And then lastly, you've got luminance, which is the brightness of that color. So how bright or how dark is that blue? And we can adjust them through eight color bands from red all the way down to magenta. Okay, so let's start off with hue first. I usually like doing that when color grading. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave reds and oranges alone. I'm sure you'll know if you follow the channel, but if you don't, usually these colors are found within the skin tones. And unless you want to adjust the skin tones, which in most cases you don't, I would just simply leave these two sliders alone. Very rarely ever change them unless I've got too much magenta or blue in my skin tones, which is usually a white balance issue, not necessarily a color grading issue. So I'm gonna leave these particular alone in this example and skip right over to yellow. Now in yellow, I'm gonna increase these by a small amount by going by plus 15. And it's the same situation with green, adding a little bit more teal to those greens. I'm gonna go for plus 25 in this example. Now with the aquas, this predominantly affects the sky, but there's no sky in my photo. Hopefully there's sky in your photo. We'll go ahead to aquas, we'll increase those by plus 50, adding in a little bit more blue for those aqua colors. And then with the blues here, I'm actually gonna reduce that down, adding a bit more of a tealy look to those blues going for minus 10 there. Then I'm gonna skip out purple and magenta. Again, sometimes you can find those particular colors in the skin tones. And again, we don't wanna adjust those. So let's move over now to saturation, which is the intensity of these colors. What we're gonna do, again, leave reds and oranges alone in this example. What we're gonna do is go jump straight to yellows. We're gonna drop those down by minus 20. Then we've got the greens here. Again, drop those down by minus 30. Then we've got the aquas. We're gonna ever so slightly increase the aquas, but not by much, just by plus five. And then with the blues, we're gonna drop those down by minus 30. That will really affect the sky if you've got the sky in your image. And then lastly, we've got purple and magenta. We're gonna drop those down equally by minus 40 in the purple, and then minus 40 in the magenta there. And that's again, all we're gonna be doing in saturation. Lastly, let's get over to luminance, which is the brightness of those colors. Now again, we are gonna actually change the luminance in the reds here. We're gonna brighten them ever so slightly, uh, plus 10 there. And then oranges here, we're gonna get increase those by the same, well, let's go for plus five. That ever so slightly brightens those skin tones, but not by much, not by a noticeable amount, but enough that it helps out the image. Then we've got yellow here, we're gonna increase those again, similar number, plus 15 there. Then we'll go to green, we're gonna create a nice big difference. We'll go for plus 50. Then we'll leave aquas alone in this example. Now what we're gonna do is actually brighten the blues. This will really help wash out those skies, create a nice soft look in your image, which really helps creating a film look. And then lastly, we've got purple and magenta, which we're going to leave alone. Okay, so let's move out of color mixer at all and let's drop down to color grading. Now in color grading, we're actually gonna create a really interesting effect, which is pretty much what Kodak Portrait is famous for. So firstly, let's go over, we've got obviously shadows, midtones, and highlights. 
But if you head over to the far right, you've also got this one called Global, which will add a color cast to the entire image. If you'd like to know more about what the color grading tool or color grading panel does, go ahead and watch this video here, which is my masterclass tutorial on the color grading panel. But what we'll do is we'll go over to our global change here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add in a nice warm tone. So I'm gonna go for around about a hue of, let's choose a hue of 60, which is this kind of yellowy color. Then what I'm gonna do is go to my saturation and it go ahead and increase it. So I'm gonna go for around about 15%. And what this will do is we'll add a color cast to the entire image, which is both shadows, midtones, and also highlights. But what Kodak Portrait is famous for is that ever so slight green. Take this photo here as an example. If you zoom into the shadows, we can see there's a lot of green in this image. And that is what we can use the color grading for to basically replicate or simulate in our photos. So instead of going to the global tool, let's go over to the shadows. Let's go ahead and choose a green. Now I like choosing a green of 100. So it's this greeny yellow. Then go to the saturation here and go ahead and increase it. The more you increase it, the more that green tinge will appear in your images. So if you're not a massive fan, simply skip this step. But I love creating this effect because it looks like Kodak Portrait. So I'm gonna go for, I think, so let's go for 18 in this example. But if you're finding it's a little bit too strong, simply reduce that number. And if you don't like it, don't add it in at all. And then with the highlights to combat that, I'm gonna add in a slightly warmer tone I'm gonna go for, usually I like choosing hue of 35 and then saturation of 10. That will just help combat that green and it massively doesn't affect those highlights there, which is something you do wanna avoid. You just wanna add this effect just to the shadows. And if you're wanting to get a better balance, you can go to the balance slider there and just ever so slightly adjust it for your photo. Again, if you'd like to learn more, I have got a masterclass tutorial on the color grading panel. Okay, so let's leave the color grading panel alone. And the last one we're gonna go do is calibration. So what we've got is our red channel here, green channel and blue channel, and you've got hue and saturation of those three channels there. So with hue here, uh, with the red, I'm gonna increase those by plus 10, to plus 10, but I'm gonna leave the saturation alone. Then with the green here, I'm gonna drop that down by a, quite a dramatic amount. I'm gonna go for minus 30, and again, leave the saturation alone. And then the same situation with the blue, we're gonna drop that down by minus 30. What we're doing is we're basically making the greens a little bit more yellow, and the blues a little bit more teal. This will create a beautiful film simulation effect. And that's all we're gonna be doing in the step two, our color grading. I can show you the before and after. So here is the before, as you can see, it's quite blue. And here is the after. We're going for this really nice, warm, very saturated effect. Okay, so let's move over to step three, which is local adjustments. Now in local adjustments, we're only gonna be creating three masks. So go out of your editing panel, drop over to your mask panel, the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna be adding in a slight grain effect to the background. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and select our background mask. This is an AI mask that so should create it automatically for you. Grant you, this is not perfect, but it doesn't really matter because this effect is going to be very subtle. What we're gonna do is go all the way to the bottom where you can find effects. We're gonna to go to a grain amount here. We're gonna add in a very small amount of grain. So we're gonna add in 15% grain there. We're gonna choose the size. I'm gonna like reducing that down to 10. And then roughness, I'm gonna reduce that down to 40. Now remember these numbers. These numbers here are gonna be replicated when we go ahead into step four, when we add in our effects, because we're adding in grain as well to the entire image. But what's really nice about, especially masking today, is we can actually add in masks just to the background. Like I like adding in a lot of grain, especially if you're creating a portrait 800 look, which is 800 ISO, you've got obviously 400 and 800, but I, you add more grain in, but you don't wanna add it to the entire image all the time. You wanna add it into certain parts. And I like adding in more grain to the background because predominantly that, you know, the foreground is where all the texture and clarity is going to be. So if you like the same effect I'm doing, I recommend doing it like so. And then lastly, what I'm gonna do is go to my mask here. I'm gonna go to a linear gradient. I'm gonna create just a subtle gradient at the bottom here. All this is gonna do is just darken that foreground there. I'm finding that bathtub a bit too bright. So I can simply select that and just darken it like so. Then what I'm going to do is create a little bit more of a warmer, a little bit more of a brighter background there. So what I'm gonna do is new mask, radial gradient, create a nice big one, but this time I'm gonna make it slightly elliptical. Make it a little bit taller, go for something like so. Move that right into the corner, make it a little bit longer. Go for something like this. Then what I'm going to do is exposure. Bring up the exposure by around 0.5. I'm gonna to go to my temperature here. 
I'm gonna increase that by 15, so I'm adding a warmer tone. Then what I'm gonna do is to really finish this effect off, I'm going to my clarity here, reduce that down by minus 20, and dehaze as well by minus 20 there. Now what this will do is we'll add a nice soft effect. Now you can apply it to any part of your image. I recommend looking or visualizing where the shadows and highlights are on your image and then try and replicate that look within your masks. So I'm gonna go for an effect like so. So pretty much just affecting the background there and ever so slightly affecting the foreground uh, where the model is as well as where her shoes are. And that's all we're gonna be doing in step three. Let's move over to step four, which is effects. Okay, so in the effects, all we're gonna do, head back to your editing panel, drop down to effects, and all we're gonna be doing is adding in a post-cropping vignette and also adding in grain. So go to your post-cropping vignette, go to your amount slider and drop that down by minus 20. This will create a negative or darker vignette. Then to basically make it nice and soft, go to your feather here and just whack that all the way up to 100%, creating a nice, subtle, soft post-cropping vignette there. And then what we're gonna do is go to our grain here and remember the numbers that you chose for your background grain. So what we can do is to have a quick look again. We zoom all the way down. Remember the numbers was 15, 10, and 40. So go back to your effects. We're gonna choose amount grain of 15, choose size of 10, and roughness of 40, which means that the grain is going to match. And then what I can do is actually zoom in and you can see how the grain has been added. So there's a little bit of grain to the foreground, but there's a little bit more grain to the background. So it's got this nice balance. And of course, if you want more grain, simply just increase that amount slider, but make sure they match. So if you wanna add more grain to this image, let's say you wanna go for amount of 30, make sure you go back into your mask here. And again, or go all the way down and simply go to your grain amount. And again, match that accordingly. So increase that by 30. Always make sure that if you're adding in grain, make sure it matches because you don't want different sized grain pixels. If you zoom in, it will look a little bit peculiar. And there we go. That is how you can create this awesome portrait effect. What I can do is show you the before and then show you the after. Now, I'm finding this photo maybe is a little bit too warm. So I'm gonna go, go back to my basic slider here. I've got my temperature here. And all I need to do is simply just reduce that down a little bit. So I might go for 5,500 Kelvin. Oh, 5,500 Kelvin there. And then what I might do is actually drop down that tint ever so slightly to plus 10 there and I'm really, really happy. Now I can show you the before and then the after. And what I'll do is just show you a couple more photos where I've applied this to. So for example, take this photo here. Uh, this is another photo. Again, I've applied the same preset. I can actually show you. If I go into my film simulations here, I've got my, I've actually made two. So I've made one that's ever so slightly softer and then one made that's a little bit harsher. I've called one Portra 400 and Portra 800. So all you'll need to do is go to your Portra 400 and reduce, just, just simply reduce some of those sliders so they're not as strong and then save it as a separate preset. Or of course, buy my film simulation preset pack one, which contains Kodak Portra 400 and also 800. So again, show you the before of that photo and also the after. And just to show you, it works on a whole range of photos. Here's a photo that I've recently taken in France. Uh, it was a very dark, dark, muggy day. And uh, this is before and after. And again, same for another photo, before and after creating that. As you can see, we zoom in, got those lovely dark greens there. And that's really what replicates that Portra 400. As well as we've got this photo here. Now this is one of my favorites, really like this. If I can show you the before, it's quite blue, quite cold. Bang, really nice. And as you can see, all I've done is I've just added in a darkened mask at the bottom and a lightened mask at the top really is that simple. And again, got another photo here, before and after. I love these photos. And then lastly, I've got this one here. This is just of my dad. I've got one here, before and after. And you can really see, especially if you've got whites, you can really see how much that curves adjustment layer creates an effect. Loads of contrast, especially if we zoom in. And if I apply it afterwards, really kind of separates him and creates this really nice soft look. And look at that sky. Before, really blue, after, lovely tealy look. I just really like this look and I wish Kodak Portrait was cheaper, but luckily we can recreate this look in Lightroom. Here is the before and here is the after. Brilliant, and there we go guys. So that is how you can create this awesome look in your photos just using Lightroom. And if you like this look and wanna support the channel, head over to my website where you can buy this look as a preset plus many other presets available. So if you wanna support the channel and get some awesome presets, head over to the link in the description. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.